Oh yes, hello, absolutely smashing to be here, of course, again. Hello, hello, cohort over there, how are you today? I'm doing very well, cohort, how about yourself? Oh gosh, we're doing absolutely great over here. It's, it's, uh, it's that time of year when the old flowers begin to bloom, the trees get their leaves, of course. It's, it's, the, it's the, it is the time of year where love flourishes and mating begins to happen all throughout the old ecosystem here. It's, it is springtime, of course, officially here in the old UK. Aren't you excited about that? Oh, yes, I'm very excited about it, actually. I'm uh, not looking forward to the increased amount of rain, but I will persevere. Oh, yes, of course. The old shower's coming down, of course. And we're not talking about the the kind of showers that you see in the old bedroom. The old golden showers, of course, from the old Evan Dictionary. Classic term, of course. That's where one's partner may urinate on another. That's a, that's a little bonus knowledge, of course. But everybody by this time, of course, knows what the old golden showers. We're talking about proper traditional rain showers, of course, yes. So, so tell me, Cohort, how do you beat the rain when it's... When you're outside, you might be out there for a classic match of croquet or perhaps seeing the latest cricket match and a little old thunderstorm creeps up on you and starts to drop a little bit of that precipitation. How do you adapt to your surroundings, cohort? Well, that's actually very easy. I, I, I just hi I hired a boy and he just holds the umbrella for me. Now, he gets a little soaked, but uh, who cares? Oh, are we talking He's about... Paid. Are we talking about young Erston, of course? Yes, young Erston. Is that is that the young boy who holds the old uh, umbrella over you? Yes, yes, uh, young Erston. That, 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 I believe that's his name. I usually just call him boy. Oh, gosh. Not exactly quaint, are we, of course? Uh, not not the, the old sharp memory, of course, has taken a little bit of a downturn for you in recent years, unfortunately. You know, I might want to get the old well, memory checked, of course. Backs. Just remember, Erston, of course. Classy Erston. We, we do... We give a little shout out to the young Erston, of course, the, yes, the strongest. Not, oh, oh, just a it's moment, cohort. So much, it's not so much that I don't remember his name as much as I don't really care. Oh gosh, I, I do apologize, cohort. I do, I do believe my tea is in proper temperature again. I'm gonna have to get that bastard Deville over here and get that fucking shit warmed up again. Do pardon my French, of course, but there's nothing more infuriating than when a gentleman gets his gets a cold tea for a beverage. Absolutely an unnecessary suffering <laughs> moment there. I do apologize. Of we course, calm do down. We have a I program to get through here, of course. I do believe that the uh, I, I do believe that the Americans actually prefer their tea cold. What kind of craziness is this? And that's why we kicked them out of the old UK and said, fuck it, you can all have your own independence. We don't give a shit anymore. Take yes. your cold tea and fuck off and have a wank. You you and Columbus can get right the hell out. Of course. So, so anyway, since we just spoke of old America, have you heard about the uh, the old elections going on over there? The the, the front runners, of course, of the old two party system they have over there. Have you heard about that? Yes, of course. I've actually been following the circus uh, this year, and uh, that they seem to be the main attraction. Yes, of course. So, so we're talking about two distinct personalities, of course, leading the way in the old American. You know, so-called democracy vote, here we are. We have two certain people. We have the old Donald Trump, I believe. Of course, he's a multi-millionaire. Uh, he's been on such shows as The Apprentice. I believe that's on the NBC network over there. And the other one, of course, the, the infamous bitch of Benghazi, of course, Hillary Clinton, which has about as much trust worth as perhaps the boy who cried wolf, don't you think, Cohort? Yes, I've actually never been quite the biggest fan of her. Um, she just, she just doesn't do it for me. I don't see what that man Bill was thinking. You know, even Bill said no. I'd rather have a little bit of internship action under the old desk, if you know what I'm saying, Gerhardt. Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. The old Monica. Yes, of course. That was quite the highlight of the old Oval Office. But think about it. If the old Hillary Clinton wins, every time she sits down in the old Oval Office. She's going to be sitting at the very spot that her husband received top-notch fellatio at all <laughs> times of the day for the next four years. Isn't that maddening? Oh, it, that's actually quite poetic justice, I believe. <laughs> of course, but tonight's entry into the Urban Dictionary reading, of course, is not Hillary Clinton. We're, we're speaking of the other mongrel we spoke of, the old Donald Trump. Uh. So Donald Trump, of course, is known for being quite the... Quite the maniacal maniac, of course, and having loads of cash and being a famous real estate tycoon all throughout 
New York City, I believe it is. But uh, he, he actually has his own entry into the Urban Dictionary, of course. And in this term called the Donald Trump, actually originated from him himself, of course, back in his old college days. So, so here we are. We're gonna take a quick moment here. We're gonna discuss just a little bit of history about Donald Trump. Of course, he went to the University of Pennsylvania. And of course, Donald Trump is no different than any other man. When he was young and in his college days, he liked to drink, he liked to party, of course. So, so what is the Donald Trump? Exactly what happened to poor Donald that one dark Saturday night on the University of Pennsylvania campus cohort? Here we go. So the Donald Trump is when a person is passed out on the floor and you shave the middle of their head and at this point things take a little bit of a turn for the for the worse as the cohorts then begin to ravishly stroke their chickens around the man that's been passed out with the middle of his head shaved with a razor and then they begin to climax and ejaculate their semen all over the spot where he was bald and then of course you take the hair and comb it over the jizz to cover the bald spot and as used in a sentence, when JJ passed out from the drinking game we were playing, we gave him the old Donald Trump. So for your visual reference here, this is what the classic Donald Trump, somebody who woke up drunk from an old party, might look like. There he is, of course, yes. Of course. So as you can tell, the hair is all aerodynamically shifted to the left side of the face there, or maybe the right side, of course, but to your left. So that is what a classic Donald Trump results may look like it's and uh, of, unfortunately mr trump of course when he woke up and saw this new hairstyle he actually embraced it and to this day he gives his ravishing speeches about america being great again with the exact same hairstyle he received after this heinous act against him cohort do you have anything to add well i mean the the man's hair has been quite his uh his biggest niche as in, uh, people don't like it as much, and his biggest asset for many years. When you see that hairstyle, you know exactly who they are forming that hairstyle off of if somebody else is holding it. It has become known as like the businessman's hairstyle, basically. And it's just insane to think that something like that is considered businessy or professional over in America. In Eng I can tell you very well, in England here, we would not stand for a man like that to walk into the office with unkempt hair, looking like somebody just jizzed right down the middle of it and did a comb over. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely atrocious. We do not, we do not accept this hairstyle into the gentleman society, of course, because Donald Trump is everything but a proper gentleman, of course. So, so with that, we will go ahead and close out that image. We do not want to give you any more exposure than we have to, of course. So we only gave you that for the visual reference of educational purposes, of course. So, so tonight's final entry, of course, we we pull a little bit of a little bit of inspiration, of course, from our partners across the old pond, the U.S. of A., where it's actually a regional term, of course. So, so this entry is called the Florida-Georgia line, or border, of course. So, so what is this? It's actually quite a simple explanation. It's something about the old, the old region, about the old times, of course. So, so the Florida-Georgia line is, of course, when two cousins come extremely close, ah, extremely close to having intercourse or fornification, of course. So, so basically, two family members that come close to bumping uglies, but they decide for certain reasons that that wouldn't be a good idea of course so so the florida georgia line is of course they, they walk that fine line so as used in a sentence of course just putting the tip in count as crossing the florida georgia line cohort have you ever heard of any tales of anybody in your travels crossing the old florida georgia line well one thing that i do want to say about that is you need to be careful with your partners and learn where your partners are from, their family, and everything beforehand. Now, I actually may have had an instance quite uh, some time ago where I was laying down with this beautiful woman about to, in about to introduce her to the old coitus that I uh, can lay down, basically. And I noticed that she had the tattoo of a her family crest tattooed on her inner thigh. It was kind of cute, actually. Until I, upon father inspection, I actually noticed that it was the same as mine, which I had tattooed on my lower back to the right a little bit. Uh, luckily that she had that tattoo there, so I would know, but I came close to crossing that line myself. 
Oh gosh, how much therapy did it cost to get you back on your feet after that? Well, after my uh, insurance took over, I would say I paid out of pocket for maybe 12 to 13 hours. Oh gosh, that's not too bad. It sounds like you had quite the old insurance plan back then, of course. You... Oh, of course, that's back when healthcare was actually affordable. Yes, so, so tonight, as we review the material that we have given you to keep you on the cutting edge of the English language's ever-evolving nature, remember, don't get drunk and be the first one to pass out. You may be a victim of the old Donald Trump, and we're not talking about getting fired, of course. So, so and then, yeah, of course, the other one, make sure that you stay clear of the flawed Georgia line. Make sure that your partners, of course, are from faraway lands. There's beauties to be had in every region of the globe. No reason to pick from your own, of course. So, so with that cohort, do you have any final thoughts? Um, basically the same thing that you have said. Steer clear of the Florida Georgia line. It is a road that you don't want to go down that just causes so much awkward uh, questions and situations. Yes, yes, and of course, as a bonus tip, make sure to steer clear of those old friends that you know called the Fart Mongoose, of course. Just a little of public course. service announcement here. The Fart Mongoose, of course, is a friend in your clique. Almost every clique has one. A man, very filthy human being that can release flatulence on command. And, and that's never a good time. Perhaps you're driving in a small car, he releases flatulence, and you end up in a fart jail. You wind up in a fart jail type scenario, of course, and that's just never pleasant. So keep your friends close and your fart mongooses even further away, of course. <laughs> yes, and, and always remember, one thing I want to leave you all with, don't be silly, wrap your willy. Yes, very good. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we conclude the seventh edition of Readings from Urban Dictionary. We thank you and have a good night. Good night. Well, apparently, the border between Florida and Georgia now is not just a fucking regional thing. It's a incest thing. So, I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here. Hey, my man Terry is coming over for some Netflix and chill later. But Terry likes to cuddle after... And 